I am putting your best hot foil tips to the test. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. I get so many fantastic tips from you especially as far as hot foiling goes, because as you know, if you watch my channel or if you don't, I don't always nail it the first time, but I keep on showing up and trying. And isn't that what it's all about? Today, I'm gonna take some of the best tips and the most common tips that I have received in recent videos and put them to the test, plus gonna make a little card. It's not my favorite card I've ever made, but the tips really did sink in and I'm so looking forward to incorporating them going forward. To see that card project and all the tips that you shared, stick around, it's coming up next. We're going to get started with this lovely foil plate, which I did use in a recent video uh, to, to do a foam stamp actually. And I'll pop that link up here, but, but here we go. We're gonna use some of the tips, number one. Let's get this friend heated up. So all these tips help me tremendously. I can't, I can't lie. It's really helpful because I do love, I love the idea of foil. So I'm gonna give this a try. So let's let this warm up. I've already got a piece of foil cut. This is from this little set, which I love, and it's the matte gold. And I am actually going to use a half sheet of hammer mill cardstock for this first pass. And I am going to use a cardstock shim as opposed to the green shim that comes with the Glimmer Machine. And of course, I'm only gonna run it through once. I'm not coming back. So let's see how this works. Everything is heated. I'm going to dislodge first, right? That way we don't get the mucky muck of double foiling. We have the pretty side to the pretty side my hammer mill cardstock on top, extra piece of cardstock. This is 110 pound Nina for the shim and the spacer pad. So that is the sandwich. Let's bring this in and we're only running it through once. I'm gonna turn this. Oh, there's a nice piece of my hair on the machine and we're gonna run it through slowly. like that, okay. One time through, take that off, take the shim off. Oh, are we through all the way? I think so. Lift this up and let us see what we got. <laughs> Experiment number one, not so good. Let's, let's try again. For take two, we are bringing this shim back in and we'll just see, let's see. I did disengage it, right? So let's see. Oh, it already feels so tight. Also, I had to tape some of the foil down. You'll see that in a minute, but let's just go through the one time like that. <laughs> well, I guess we're gonna peel and reveal. Okay, that... That looks much better. There's no overfoiling. It might be a little light in the middle, but that's not bad. Having a full sheet helps me for a big thing like that. This is the hammer mill and it really does look good. I mean, that is, you know, look at all that beautiful shine as it picks up the reflection. All right, disengaging platform, I think is what I need to do from here on out. So experiment one with multiple techniques. Yay. For the next experiment, I have this really sweet set that has all these just very basic greetings. And actually, let's get that out of the way. It's very shiny. So I will get this ready. We are going to try the Tim Holtz grip mat technique. So I'm gonna put the grip mat down so it will hold my little guys and make, hopefully they don't shift in place. I don't know if this is the way to do it, but this is how I'm going to try it. So let's go ahead and heat that up and I'll get my foil cut and my cardstock ready. I'm going to take another piece of hammer mill and I guess I'm just gonna do that, pretty side to pretty side. Oh, disengage, pop that on, okay. And now shim and 
a spacer pad. Now I think it's going to make it a little thicker running through with the Tim Holtz, but let's let's give it a whirl. Nice and slow, and only one pass. Oh, I probably could have made them less straight, but you know, we're, we're working it out. We're working it out. All right, slide you out, and let's see. Let's see if that worked. Now, we are peeling this off. Ooh, okay, that overfoiled a little. That's not bad. That's not bad for holding things in place. And I can cut all of these greetings out. I could erase that too. Huh, that is interesting. It did do a nice job transferring the foil and holding those relatively in place with, of course, that doesn't matter out there. All right, experiment two, cool. Experiment three, the hinge method. And I don't even think I need all of this, but we're gonna see. Meaning I don't know if I need all this tape. Maybe I should only do three. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to push my, you know what I mean? I'm putting them at an angle too, so they don't run through uh, at quite the same, uh, let's go like that. There we go. If that makes sense. Now I need to put the pretty side underneath. So I can take little strips now. Then, right, do we go pretty side Get that right tucked under like that. <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> Tape that into place too. I don't know, we're, we're giving it a go, okay? Now, <laughs> oh Lord help me. Okay, pop this down onto the platform. I have no idea if this is gonna work. We'll heat it up, we'll put on our plates and we'll run them through. Also, because this is taped into place. I don't think I need to worry about the disengaging because everything's taped and nothing's going to shift. And I guess we'll know, <laughs> we'll know if that theory is correct in just a second. Nice and slow. Oh, that's going through much nicer without it, the uh, foil plates being straight and flat. We're not coming back. We're only doing the single pass. Ooh, now these are all very hot. So let me get this out of the way. Something foiled. Pick you up. Hey, that looks really good. I don't want to touch it though. Oh, tweezers. Ooh, that's nice. That is a nice one. All right, get you off. Pick you up. That's a nice one too. Hey, I may have just figured out how tape works. Although, you know what? I should have used the Spellbinders tape because this tape just seems to want to fall apart. Oh, those look great. All right, the hinge method, which I've never conceptually understood before, and those are cool enough to, talk, uh, to touch, that actually works. And I think those look better than what I had done. Well, it's, I mean, it's about the same. There's just no, there's no extra. Okay, and of course, as you know, you can always erase um, if you have a mono sand eraser, or I use this tool from, uh, it's the Creative Detailer. Learned about it on Jennifer McGuire's channel, and you can just turn it on and just literally get it off. Oh, what did I just get on here? Something was on my finger. I have no idea. There we go. There we go. Um, or again, a mono sand eraser would work as well. Just to show you really quick, let's say you have a piece of foil. But it tend, I, you know what? I'm a fan of this because even here, right, where there's this little extra foiling, that takes it off really nicely. I know it sounds like we're in a dentist office right now, but. That works great. All right, so we, we did all the things. Now, um, let me make a quick card. I'm going to go ahead and cut my greetings out, and I'm just using one of my Simon Says Stamp sentiment labels, and this is perfect for this greeting. Oh, I love that. It gives it a nice, generous framing. Like 
So I'll go ahead and cut out these sentiments so I have some choices to use. All right, I'll go ahead and do this. I'll just do one for right now. And I think I may put a little fishtail on here. I like to tape it down into place. I always take the larger of the two because I like to be able to clearly frame it and see it. I don't always get it perfect, but if I try this with scissors, it's going to be even worse. And just tape that into place and I'll go ahead and cut that out as well. All right, and now you can see the cute little fishtail here and I will go ahead and grab my trimmer so I can cut this down. And I'll just bring this in, slide that over till the T hits about right past that little center groove. Hold that down and cut. Now I have a cute little greeting for my card. I'm going to add a little color to this, not a lot, but I pulled a few inks that I think will be nice. So I'm going to pop on some music. Actually, you know what I might do? I'm gonna cut this a little at the top so I can push it up a little further. Place this on my mat. I'll grab some blender brushes and we'll go ahead and color this in. So that's just a quick way to add color. And then all I'm gonna do is wipe out from the center to the sides if there's any ink that pooled on the foil, but still, and actually I got a little green there that I didn't want. So you can just kind of go over it a little. It's not meant to be perfect, but it's a pretty way. You still have all that shine. And now we have this pretty added loosey goosey kind of color. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this out. I actually flipped this because I don't like how that turned out. And if I do, if I do this, then possibly, and let's just see, my greeting could be positioned in such a way that it won't be as noticeable if I try it this way. Let's trim this down. I'm gonna score my note card at five and a half. This is a sheet of 11 inch by four and a quarter. Give that a nice press with my Teflon bone folder. All right, and I will tape this down. All right, putting this on here and <laughs> I don't know, I don't necessarily love this as much as I wanted to. I don't, I don't love my inking because this is, this would have been so pretty just on its own, right? With the foil and the shine, but maybe, well, let's see, do I want to go that way? I don't, nah, mm. it doesn't matter. The part that I got green on does not matter. I actually like this orientation better. I don't know why. I think cause I like, I like that. And you know, if I put some shiny things on, maybe you won't notice it how shoddy my inking is. What do we say? Let's do it. All right. It's just not, it's not my best ink inking job, but I still think the tips that I picked up today are, are good. So thank you for your tips. I'm gonna pop this down. Excuse my head if it gets in the way. I mean, I have a head. It's on, wait, it's that, yeah, okay. <laughs> One of those moments where I'm like, did I do it? Did I get it? And the answer is yes. I do like the border, you know, and I like this, I like this greeting. So let's just put it down. We're gonna, we're gonna salvage this. Um, and I say salvage because I just don't think I did the best uh, inking that I could have done, but you know, 
Not every card you're going to make is going to be the greatest masterpiece in the world. That is something to keep in mind. I know that a lot of times you'll see something on the YouTube and it looks really good and you're like, I want to do that. And then you can't do that. This is an example of, I want to do that and you can. And then you learn as you go, right? These are just tips. So let's bring in our assignment. What is on my T-square? It's gross. I'm going to grab my other one. I have two of them and there's a piece of, I don't really know what it is, but I'm going to butt this up against here because I think I want this to be, I love the T-square because it gives me something to push into and helps me to line up the greeting right on the edge. Oh, it just makes me so happy every time. And it's perfectly butted up against the edge. Let's grab some shiny things and see what they look like. Sometimes a few sequins can definitely tie something together. Part of me wishes, and I, I don't think it exists for this, that this foil plate had a stencil to go with it. I think everything that has the, uh, you know, everything that has those coordinated stencils now for coloring, I think they're brilliant because it just makes it so easy to add color, whether it's a stamped image, whether it's a foiled image. I actually do have a video, and I'll be sure to put a card up for that as well, where I did use a hot foil plate from Waffle Flower that also had a stencil, and oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite cards from last year. Okay, so that is our finished card project. So we do get a lot of the good shine right from there we go. Now you can see how pretty the foil is. And hopefully the photo too will do it justice. But I will say this, your tips totally helped. And I think the best tip that I've taken away from all the feedback is the disengaging of the platform. And probably the number one, only run it through one time. That's going to change foiling for me from here on out. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you, so subscribe today and I will see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more videos where I'm attempting hot foiling, some with success, some with eh, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I will see you in those videos.